I'm actually going to act like you're in a class where you don't like math. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I think that what I tell them on their first day is what I think would be good for you today. I tell them that I want them to have a good story to tell at a dinner table regarding math. We often will hear math is in the everyday world. I'm going to show you examples of that, but I also want you to see that math teaches you lessons about living life itself. Well, one of the things I want to start with is just a magic trick. I'm going to teach you how it works, but not until we're done. So what I want you to do is I want you to pick a number between 10 and 20. All right? So think of a number, whatever it is. So what you do is then you're going to count and go this way with your number. So let's say I took, picked 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then keep track of where you ended. OK, now I'm going to swipe away the tail of the 9. Now, pay attention to what I'm doing. This is where I landed, and I'm going to count to my number again, but this is the important part. Wherever I landed, that's one. So I go one, two, three. Everybody understand? Wherever you are, you go one, two, and then count to your number and see where you land going this way. Okay? So through the magic of being part of this moody workshop, I predict that you're there. Anyway, let's see the way the trick works. Let me pick 13 so I get a little farther. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay? Then you come back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And these are the ones I swipe away. But when I get here, no matter what happens, how many do I have left? Can you think what it would be? I see some of you are getting it. It's however many were in the tail because that's what brought me here. How many are in the tail? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So when you're here, how many do you have left? Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right there? You can set it up with coins yourself. Whatever's in that tail, wherever they're going to be before that, tells you where they're going to land. Sometimes math makes the magical logical. Even just even in the work world, there'll be things that companies do or products do, and it could be like, Holy cow, how are they doing that? Sometimes it's very complex. But sometimes the complexity was not necessarily the mathematics. It was the insight. It was the ingenuity of the insight that gave them that. And so sometimes that ability to learn to like have a word problem and turn it into a math problem, that process of being logical and then walking through it is what we can apply to life. So the next thing we're going to do is see how math can capture the complex. That is actually associated to the words that are on the booklet that is on your table, is math modeling. One place that math modeling is used a lot is actually in something that is often on phones, and that's Angry Birds. Angry Birds uses math underneath it every time. Why? Particularly if you've played the game, that red bird that you have in the first level that bird, if you actually work it out, does not have air resistance. When you do not have air resistance, you're following a parabola. x squared plus 2x plus 1. Remember those? Parabola. Every single time. Whether you like math or not, when you take that red bird, you're actually picking which parabola will get you where you want to go. It turns out that among being a math professor, I was also trained at, earlier in my life in the art form of mime, of all things. Mime is where you can make things out of nothing, where there's nothing there. First time I trained with Marcel Marceau was here in New York City. Well, to help you get a sense of that and of this modeling idea, I want to show an illusion to you. And this is the illusion. I'm going to step on this side just so I'm more central to where you are. So I'm going to go inside this. I'm going to grab this pretend ball. I can throw it up and catch it, but this is the part that's important. I'll throw it up and get it in the bag. And I can throw it up again, and it goes in the bag. So now, I'm going to ask you to toss the ball to me. So just grab the ball and then wait. All right, so toss it up. And it goes right in. And I'm going to have you toss the ball to me. All right, go ahead. And it goes right in. Did, yeah, somebody saw it. What am I doing to make it work? Yeah, I actually snapped my finger, and that's what actually makes the illusion, like that. <laughs> what makes it real, what makes it seem amazing, is actually following the trajectory of the ball. 
there's a chance that you might have seen what's called the ghost image, where something in your brain almost sees something. That's that modeling of the trajectory of a ball. All right, so let's try another one. Math can prove the unintuitive. One of the ways that math is used is in the movies. So this is what's called a wireframe of Yoda. And can you see that it's actually created from different polygons? Can you see that? So when you hear that CGI is used in a film, this is part of what they're talking about. First, you need to know the points that make up the character, and then which of those dots, if you will, are connected with a line. Why? Because if you rotate, for instance, if you want to move the character, all you have to know is how every one of those dots repositions, and then you reconnect the dots again. When they make these characters, they use a math algorithm to do it. So we're going to start with a square in terms of what we have. And then what I do is the first step is called a split. So for each line, I find the midpoint. Then what I do after the split, I do the average. So what happens is for each set of points, I'm going to find the average of those two points, which I found here. And that replaces, it, here I replace the point, the two points with the, with the average. Then I would find the midpoint for each of those in average, and I would do it again and again until I finally get a smooth shape. Why do they do that? Because you, when I had that Yoda picture, if you zoomed in really carefully, you'd see that he had edges on him. All they then do is apply this with enough steps, and it becomes smooth. OK, so one more. Math explains the world. Sometimes things happen, and we're not sure why we're so amazed. And sometimes math helps us with that. In 2013, Steph Curry was here in New York City, and he shot 11 of 13 three-pointers. Why Steph Curry? One, because he's Steph Curry. But two, because he went to my school. He actually came to Davidson College. That's where he went to college. OK, so what we're going to do is I'm going to let you shoot better than Steph Curry. In 2013, he was shooting at a rate of three-pointers at a rate of 45.3%. Uh, I'm going to let you shoot at 50%. OK, and this is the way it's going to work. Because what I'm going to do is I already flipped a coin, and it came up heads or tails. I want you to guess, do you think what I'm about to show is heads or tails? If you get it right, it's a made shot. If you get it wrong, then it isn't. And just keep track of how many made shots you got. OK, so now we're going to do 13 shots, and you're trying to see if you hit 11. All right? OK, so here we go. Heads or tails? How many people got um, 11? Did anybody? The reason that we didn't see anybody is because it's under 1% that you actually have a chance of getting 11, just 11. That's why people went nuts when they saw it. It turns out that you can learn how to do the math behind this. But another way you can use a math, do the math is actually with a computer like you see in front of you. You can have it just flip a coin 13 times and see if it got 11 of them, and just do it a lot of times, and then you figure out what that percentage is. Really, that kind of seems like cheating. It's not. It's called, it's, there's a technique for it. It's called simulation. We do math because it can help us take the complexity of life and make it simpler. It can make the magical parts of life make more sense. And we can look at the world and understand it in ways. So math is in the everyday. But more importantly, mathematical thinking can improve the everyday for you. And that's my story for you that hopefully you can take back. And when, when someone asks you a question, if nothing else, you can either take out a paper bag or you can take out a bunch of pennies and show them some of the magic of math, if not the stories of math with things like Angry Birds.